and the last shall be what? Verse. I thought that was for you. Hallelujah. I thought God was speaking to you. Hallelujah. Especially those who are shouting amen, may God accelerate you. I receive. So, you have to understand why it's important for you to know that it's a psalm of David. Because it's David that was taken from nothing to something. Amen, amen. Come on. But I was surprised God is telling me, tell them you deserve it. <laughs> then God took me to Psalm 103. And I saw the Psalm of David. Now you have to ask yourself this question. Mm -hmm. Did David become king because he deserved it? Because he worked for it? Or because God decided that he would be? Amen. God decided. Because God decided. Amen. So you don't deserve things because you worked, but because God decided. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Listen, the devil's work, the devil's work is for you to disqualify yourself from what God has already decided to give. I think this is for people in the back. The devil's mission is always to do one thing. To make you see that you don't belong where you want to be in. That you're not qualified to be where you are, you are desiring to be. Help us, Lord. Because in his mind, he knows that you have been taught everything that you have, you have to work for it. Shy. Teach it, Papa. But there are things that are from Jesus that you can never work for. Hallelujah. That he can only give you. I receive. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he shall lift you up. Not because you deserve it, but because he decided. Ah. May God elevate you this hour. I receive. May God lift you up this hour. I receive. Now I capture so, this. Go, go. Capture this. That's I good, want you to good. capture this. That's good. Labra dia sove. La clariosto in prodovida. Now listen to this. Capture this. Capture this. David. When people read this psalm, they never really read it. Today I want you to really read it. Do you know why Jesus said repent? For the kingdom of God is coming. He never said ask for forgiveness. Because forgiveness was already given. So he did not. He, God does not cry over spilled milk. The devil wants you to bury yourself over spilled milk. Something that you will not have power to change. Oh, Papa, you're doing good. The devil wants you to focus on what lost, what was lost, what you did, what you used to be. Yet God is in the future. God is not concerned about where you are. Hallelujah. Anybody that has the mind to move forward never focuses on the past. Hallelujah. As long as you keep Blaming yourself, focusing on what used to be. Your present time will be the past also. I should have changed on that day. I should have changed, I should have prayed. So you're keeping on to build piling baggages over baggages over baggages. Yet the Lord wants you to move forward. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot undo time. Yes. You can never undo what happened. But you can move forward. It makes up for what you did. Amen. And it erases what you did. If you Amen. move forward. Amen. Because your present will always be more powerful than your past. Amen. People may have known you as broke, but your present speaks a different story. Amen. People may have known you like somebody who is nobody, but your present says you are somebody. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say you deserve it. You deserve it. I want you to capture this. So I want you to read this properly. Now, read it again, Bishop. 
A Psalm of David. Uh -huh. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now you have to understand why he's saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, not bless the Lord, O my spirit. Amen. Because every reasoning that you have in you, the questions that you have, the battles that you have, they're in your soul, not in your spirit. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this, all things are yours, past, present, and future. So your spirit moves with the knowledge that God has provided all, has done all. But your soul always deals with condemnation, what used to be, what may be, what could be. Amen, amen. So he's talking to himself to align himself to understand like, listen, what is this that you're doing? Because what you're doing is wrong. Some of you, you need a conversation with yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you, you need a conversation with yourself. Amen. You need to go and look at yourself in the mirror. Say, hey, handsome. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be ugly. You're handsome. Stop talking down on yourself. Look at how wonderfully you are made. Yes. Do you understand that you are bought with a price? Yes. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? You are better than this. From today, change. Hallelujah. I am talking to the wrong Hallelujah. people. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The greatest prayer you can ever do begins with yourself. Because remember, prayer simply means asking or pleading. You need to pray to yourself and tell yourself, listen, stop these things you're doing. Amen. Have we see. You need to speak to yourself. You need to speak to yourself. The devil has told you you can never make it. Now you, you have also taken that culture. So now you walk, hey, I bind, I rebuke what the devil said. No, look at yourself and say, where is defeat? Where? Yes. Where? Poverty? Where? Sickness? Where? You need to speak to yourself. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you need to speak to yourself. Neighbor, you need to speak to yourself. Now, many of you, you've been taught one thing. You've been taught one thing. Condemn yourself. You don't deserve anything. You are nothing. You are but dust. You are nothing. Just stand before God and say, I am nothing. God is looking at you and saying, you are everything. Amen. But you, you are standing making the wrong confession saying you are nothing. Do you understand that you are an extension? The Bible says you are the body of Christ. And Christ is the head. Now, if you can exp explain how God restores people's blind eyes or how God heals the sick, it's not a miracle. Amen. So whatever you face in your life, that is something you cannot describe. That is something that you cannot do of your own accord. Teacher. It means that you are making room for a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But now there is a problem. Because the Bible says that, and God rested from all his work. From all mm. his work. Mm -hmm. Touch your neighbor, say all his work. All his work. This is Genesis chapter number 2. It says, and God rested from all his work which he created and made. All his work. God does not have plan B. Amen. Hallelujah. God has never had a plan B. There will never be a plan B from God. Plan A sticks through because he is God. God does not make up solutions as things go or as things play. He already had the solution. That's why he allowed it to play out. Hallelujah. I am talking to myself. Now, if God, now you have to understand this. The Bible says that God rested from all his works. Yes. All his works. All of it. 
Meaning God is not making up a, a, a breakaway plan or as or an emergency break plan to change your situation. Your situation was the original plan from the beginning anyway. Amen. The Bible says, for those he foreknew, he also predestined. Amen. For those he foreknew. So unless you think God is just discovering that your name is Shenene. <laughs> God did not know me before, so God is discovering about me now. The Bible says that he has your name written on his hand. Hallelujah. Engraved, meaning he has a tattoo of your name. I don't know if you're catching this. When he looked at Jeremiah, he told him, I knew you, not I know you. You know that song we sing, he knows my name is the wrong way. It's the wrong lyric. He knew Amen. my name. He knew everything. But if you're thinking God is just knowing about you now, then you don't know who God is. I don't know if somebody is catching me. The Lord spoke to me when I was in the car. I was asking the Lord, what will I speak to your people? And the Lord told me, tell them they deserve it. Hallelujah! Now somebody is not catching what I'm saying. Hallelujah! I, I, maybe I'm talking to the people on YouTube. Maybe I'm talking to Facebook. I don't know if I'm talking to you. This is the word from the mouth of the Lord. I was shocked when God told me this. Sit, sit for a second. I was shocked. God is telling me, ah. <laughs> I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to say? He said, tell them you deserve it. I receive. Now, I want you to go, and we are still talking about the hand of God. What I prepared to speak about, Amen. God flipped it upside down. I don't know if somebody is ready. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Amen. Are you there, Bishop? Yes. Okay, read verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. What does it should start with the Psalm of David or something oh, I'm like sorry. that? <clears throat> psalm 103, a Psalm of David. Now you have to understand why it's important for you to know it's a Psalm of David. Amen. When God made me read this, you have to understand why it's a Psalm of David. You have to understand that David was the last born of his father. One that nobody counted, no one thought that would become anything. Mm -hmm. Try. Try. Amen. Some of you, you are here, you are Davids of your family. Amen. You are Davids of your career. I'm talking, I think I'm in the wrong church. Some of you, you are Davids of other things. Hallelujah, yes, yes. All your life, people have come. They've seen other people, but they've passed you by. But the word of the Lord says,